In 2013, Nissan came out with an engine that was game-changing. An engine block that could be held by one man alone, could fit into a hand luggage basket, and created performance, in some cases, greater than F1. And then, pff, the engine came, blew our minds, and then disappeared. So what the hell happened to the Nissan DI GTR engine? The engine that looked to change the world. Storm panels sued me for $130 million. We'll take a look at its stunning engineering, what the hell happened to it, and also reveal a modern equivalent that you could technically put in your own car. Let's start with what this engine was. You could look at it on paper and just say it was a three-cylinder, 1.5-litre turbo. A Ford Fiesta ST has one of them that creates 200 horsepower. That's enough. Well, okay, but this Nissan engine creates double that power but at a third of the mass. How does that work? Take a look at it, the DI GTR engine, or DIG TR. I like to call it the Diglett engine. Isn't it a good looking piece of kit? That billet block, the carbon bits all over it, those red Nismo accents. Imagine how good this engine would look in the engine bay of some MX-5 rivaling Nissan. The image that made it look the coolest was this press picture. That is the president of Nismo holding the Diglett engine without even breaking a sweat, like it's a potted plant. Every lightweight obsessed engineer would have seen that picture and thought, I'm taking a quick break from engine nerdiness to cook the crew some lunch, thanks to the sponsor of today's video, HelloFresh. When filming at workshops, most of which are in industrial estates, it can be far too easy to default to whatever fast food is around, normally the local greasy spoon. When I'm back home then, I like to make sure I'm eating the best quality stuff, and HelloFresh will send you a recipe box that can nail whatever vibe you're after. The recipes are step by step and can be cooked in as little as 15 minutes and it's up to you whether you want to go more carbs or more protein, you can simply hop into the app and pick the box that you fancy. For you guys that have super busy lives and end up going to the supermarket and getting the same old ingredients, a HelloFresh box makes it as convenient as it gets. Use this QR code on screen now and the discount code HelloDrive60 to get 60% off your first box and 25% off the next two months, as well as free dessert for life. This offer is exclusive to you Drive Tribe fans and is running for a limited time only. We wouldn't be able to make the content we make without partners like this, so thank you to HelloFresh for sponsoring today's video. Crew, lunch is up. The PR spin on this lightweight engine was that it created 400 brake horsepower, but was only 40 kilograms and could fit in the hand luggage checker at airports. Imagine being a Nissan engineer, being asked to bring a spare engine to Le Mans from Japan and simply carrying it onto the plane, whacking it up into the overhead luggage compartment or even under the seat in front of you. Let's dive into this thing's stats on paper. Three cylinder turbo, 1.5 liters, 40 kilograms, 400 brake horsepower, and 280 pounds feet of torque. Let's compare those figures to some of the best engines statistically ever made. We talk about power to weight ratios in cars, but let's narrow that down to engines. As you can see from this graph, the Diglett engine stands head and shoulders above some of the greatest engines to have graced this earth. At 10 horsepower per kilogram, it monsters any of the top class road car engines like Merck's four cylinder turbo and even the V8 from the Ferrari 458. It even manages to topple the greatest F1 engines from the last 30 years, even beating the V10 and V8 screamers from 25, 30 years ago. Those only create 8.2 and 7.9 horsepower per kilo. Of course, if we go back to the crazy turbocharging days of the 1980s, even the mighty Diglett takes a hammering. The ultimate power to weight can be traced to the BMW M12 engine. Based on the standard M10 from the 60s, F1 engineers managed to coax that thing up to 1500 brake horsepower using four cylinders and a single massive turbocharger. Considering that thing got down to anywhere between 45 to 70 kilograms, whichever weight you pick, it blasts straight up to 21 to 33 brake horsepower per kilogram. 
But that defeats the point of the Nissan engine. This thing was designed during the era of downsizing, and Nissan wanted to prove that they could create serious power from a relatively frugal small three-cylinder engine. The best modern engine to compare it to would be the Yaris GR's three-pot. That currently holds the record for the most powerful 1.6-litre production engine. The new one puts out 280 horsepower, which is pretty good for a three-pot. Well done, Toyota. You still get eaten alive by Diglett. The dimensions of the Diglett are astounding. 50 centimetres by 40 centimetres by 20 centimetres, shown beautifully by my demonstrator here. Something this size created more power than an S62 V8 from an E39M5. So that is a 40 kilogram 400 brake horsepower engine, but what was it actually used for? Sadly, it didn't ever find its way into a road car. Instead, it went into this crazy thing. This is the Nissan z RC. You may think of it as the Nissan Delta Wing, but technically the Diglett only came around once Nissan had rebranded it the z something that triggered a lawsuit between the two companies that was settled out of court. The z standing for Zero Emissions On Demand, was a car that was entered into the Garage 56 Experimental Entry, the same space that the Chevy NASCAR took up in 2023. The aim for Nissan was to show all new levels of efficiency, combining that three-cylinder engine with a hybrid system, but taking things a step further, aiming to set one fully electric lap per stint, essentially one per hour. The whole point in this car was to maximise efficiency while still lapping at something resembling race pace at Le Mans. Its fundamental delta wing look, reminiscent of all your favourite stealth aircraft, was designed to dramatically reduce aerodynamic drag due to a small frontal area. It accomplished that using a very sleek profile and a front track of just 61 centimetres versus a fairly normal rear track of 1.7 metres. The design also made it super light, just 475 kilograms, which suddenly makes the savagely light engine design make sense too. Add in the electric propulsion, allowing the engine some downtime every hour or so, and you've got a seriously efficient race car. Was it fast? Well, it qualified at the 2014 24 Hours of Le Mans with a 3 minute 50 second lap, placing it 27th on the grid and at the back of the prototypes, but ahead of the GT cars. It did manage to crack 300 kilometers an hour down the Mulsanne Strait and was originally bench tested to be quicker than the early 2010s Indy cars, both in a straight line and through the corners. But sadly, it got let down by its gearbox, a very common issue in a 24 hour race and only managed six laps of racing. This car and engine combination may not have had its best time at Le Mans, but it did have a chance to shine at the Top Gear test track, somewhere that we've been playing about on recently. Nismo sent down a team and they set a one minute, five second lap time. That is fast, no matter which way you look at it. It's only one second off the Lotus T125 single seater, essentially a miniature F1 car. All of this experimentation with the Delta Wing then led to the foundations of Nissan's LMP1 project, that crazy V6 twin turbo front wheel drive but also all wheel drive GTRLM. But eventually, Nissan shut down that project too. The Diglett engine effectively did its job then. Nissan wanted an incredibly efficient, light engine to propel its prototype around Le Mans, and barring the gearbox failure, it managed everything it was asked to do. Although the stats on this Nissan engine are insane, let's face it, it's a race engine. That means all of its components will have been machined to incredibly tight tolerances, and that means you need to think about preheating to maximize lubrication. You need to think about polishing all of the ports to within an inch of their lives to maximize airflow. Then you need some pretty trick injectors to keep up with that air supply and supply the right amount of fuel. All of those factors do not make it a viable road car engine. Just look at the issues that AMG have had with their hypercar Formula One engine. If the motorsport project had gone better and showed a bit more success, maybe Nissan would have gone down the route of a more chill version for the road with slightly different components to make it viable as an MX-5 or 350Z style engine. But wouldn't we all be left wishing we had that 40 kilogram, 400 horsepower combo? Everyone would want that Instagram picture holding the engine just before they installed it into their 350Z. 
To find out what happened to the Nissan z -Odd and the Diglett engine, I managed to grab some time with Darren Cox, who was the Global Motorsport Director for Nismo and made this project possible. Uh, yeah, why the sudden interest in Zeal? It's sort of been airbrushed out of most... Um, yeah, I, I'm an engine guy. That little three-cylinder in that z -Odd is unreal. Like, the actual stats associated with it. And you have to go back to Delta Wing for this, which is, you know, nobody wanted to do the Delta Wing. You know, we should take a risk on this because, you know, the ROI on other stuff we've done, and it wasn't just, you know, GT Academy, we've done a lot of other crazy outside of motorsport uh, with my team at that time that we should then provide this engine so that you then fast forward you know to the end of the project and we wanted to do what we wanted to do with it and don wanted to do what he wanted to do with it and in the end we're like now nah, you're right off you, you know go and do your own thing and then don didn't even get the, the concept of it put a roof on it put some wings on it i mean the whole thing it's a wing you know the end of the delta wing story was and then don panels sued me for 130 million dollars which you know is on record that when we split with him and his partners we then went and did the Ziod, and he sued me ben and nissan so personally our names are on the the, the court papers he's a bit of a wake-up call that you oh. know um yeah this this was something interesting so where did the three-cylinder hybrid powertrain come from nissan were going down the electrification route we knew if we were going to spend money on motorsport we had to uh you know include some uh, element of electrification and and be innovative with that ele electrification um hybrid system uh, in a race car was was born out of you know a discussion between ben and i about how we use the platform of delta wing so there was an agreement in place with the aco saying couldn't just walk away like do delta wing do nothing then come an lmp1 it, because that wasn't a really a nissan project was it okay well it was but right so there was always this like small group of people in in nismo the real racers that wanted to go to the mall so innovation excites here's a project delta wing we should be going and do it like that we're not going to go to the mall and do it like audi or porsche we need to do it some way different you know we we made a statement which was we were going to run an electric lap faster than a ferrari so what brought that project to a close then was it simply because it was just okay we've done that next step is lmp1 did yeah. that car just get purely mothballed yeah. because it was on to the next yeah in fact halfway through um bulby moved off the project to move on to lmp1 and he took all these good people with it which probably was where we went wrong right so it was sort of the forgotten child right it was sort of which which was a real shame because it had huge opportunity um and how was it holding it that was it genuinely as easy to hold as the pictures make it look? Miyatani san I think he wasn't in the same studio, so he held something and we photoshopped the, the engine on. It's a fake. That PR picture's a fake. Yeah. I can't believe it. Our thumbnail's going to be that. There you go. If you were to guess where the car and the engine is now, would you say it'll be back at Nismo HQ? There is a show car in the UK, and the real one, yeah, must be in must be in Japan, in 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 the the secret uh, museum. It isn't so secret. So. so there you have it. The forty kilogram engine simply wasn't the engine to carry Nismo from the Ziod up to the GTR LM LMP1 car. So it got binned, and that was that. There is another engine that can apparently be used for road juice that's in a very similar mould to the Diglett but comes from a very odd place in the motoring industry. Have you ever heard of midget oval racing? These things here. Well, there is an engine available for that series that has a very weird displacement but creates incredible power for the size of it. This is the Billet Midget, an engine created by engine developers Katek Engineering. It's a four cylinder, but it's a 2.7 litre, very weird displacement, but it puts out 400 brake horsepower, just like Diglett, but it does it without a turbo inside. This thing is purely naturally aspirated. It's based on the Chevy LT four cylinder and clearly has amazing breathing abilities and must have race engine components in it to maximize every single horsepower, despite not having forced induction. 
This tiny bruiser of an engine has a super high compression ratio of 14 to 1, titanium intake valves, individual throttle bodies, a custom billet crankshaft and ported and polished chambers in the cylinder head. It's also designed to sit at a 45 degree angle in the midget race cars for weight distribution purposes when going around the ovals, so it would look even cooler if mounted that way in something S2000 sized. Saying all of this, it is still twice the weight of the Nissan engine, coming in at around 91 kilograms. Katic does say though that it will be available for consumer use. I would like to see what the servicing and engine rebuild intervals are on this thing, considering how highly strung it is. Also, I can't seem to find it for sale on their website, although maybe it's still in development. Which car would you guys install these billet engines into? Tell me in the comments below. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. I've been Mike, and don't forget to subscribe to Drive Tribe.